Hey, this is Paul from Between the Barrier to Me, and you're listening to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience. Welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience here on 90.3 WMSE of Claire. This is your host, Chris, and I'm here at Irving Plaza with Paul of Between the Barrier to Me. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing great. It's good to be here. Thanks yeah, for having no. me. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure, especially being here. I've never been like in the, the back room of uh, Irving Plaza before, so this is really, really cool. <laughs> it's not as majestic as one might think, but it's it's nice. I made the comment before uh, when we got here. I was like, oh, I always see this on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like really cool to be actually sitting here right now. Yeah, here we are. So uh, you're actually touring for Colors right now, the 10th anniversary of Colors. Um, and you guys played two shows so far, I think Baltimore and Philly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how were those shows so far? Both were sold out. Both were really good. It's amazing to see this kind of uh, response to a, really an album that we did 10 years ago, like you said. So it's it's hard to believe that people um still feel kind of an attachment to that album enough so to buy tickets and see the show you know so we're super honored i would imagine like every show would be sold out right now because like i know my one friend was thinking about coming and he was looking up on StubHub and see geek like that and they're charging like three times the value and all that yeah i mean i i mean a lot of the shows are sold out it's probably a combination of the fact that we're um we're mostly doing kind of smaller smaller places Honestly, as as an homage to, to that era, you know, yeah. similar venues to what we we would be playing back then, um, and then also, um, like I said, you know, just more people than we expected have have shown interest in coming to the shows. So as a result, yeah, a lot of the shows have have sold out in advance, which is which is really cool. I mean, it's kind of a double edged sword. You'd like more people to be able to come to the show, but. Yeah. You know, that's, it is what it is, I guess. Well, I noticed this show was actually at Gramercy Theater first, mm-hmm. and it got upgraded to here. Yeah. Which is pretty cool, because then, like, a bunch more tickets were available. Exactly, yeah. So, so that was nice and all that. That was nice, yeah. And, it, you know, I mean, I guess, yeah, technically it could have been upgraded again to maybe PlayStation or something, but then it would have it would have not sold out, and I think the vibe would have probably been wrong. So, I mean, I think it's this is a perfect venue for... It's very for intimate. The, yeah, it's intimate, yeah. and it, like I said, it's it fits the what we're doing you know we're, like i said we're doing an album from from 10 years ago so it should be in a i think it should be in a venue like this it's a good rock club so this tour has tooth grinder well contortionist polyphia and tooth grinder mm-hmm. that's a really stacked lineup right yeah, there all awesome bands did yeah. you pick those bands or we have you know generally when we when we do a tour we're sort of given a list from the booking agents of like hey here's some options here's some bands that are looking to tour around that time um we're obviously good friends with Contortionist and and love the band and you know they just recorded a new album as well so um, we thought that was like a perfect a perfect fit for the tour that was a no brainer and then you know for the opening bands we just wanted some bands that are young and hungry and and are doing something different doing something cool so yeah Polyphia and Tooth Grinder both really stood out for us um, and. Yeah, they haven't haven't disappointed. I think not only do we like like the bands musically and as people, but um, the crowd seems to really dig it, and I think it's a good fit for the tour. You know, seeing so. like Tooth Grinder live is like a crazy experience. I yeah, they're that. crazy. I they think go, they're from here, so yeah, Asbury Park. Yeah, should be a, yeah or near here, so this should be a, a sort of a hometown gig for them, and um, or close to it. And yeah, they're they just put on a really good show. So I, I imagine tonight it's going to be pretty wild so i know the tour is like early like i said this is the third show right now on the the date but do you have any fun stories you want to share about them or maybe previous stories like if you toured with them before no yeah this is a question that always comes up we're a pretty like boring band especially now that we're older we just keep getting more and more boring um and uneventful and this tour is really too young to have any any major calamities happen or anything but um so you know no real no real stories yet unfortunately and we've toured with contortionists a number of times and those guys are super chill too and you know i can't think of any there's just no no good stories unfortunately we're always disappointing in that regard people always ask for crazy tour stories and we just don't have them yeah no it's it's okay i don't know one time i fell asleep in the bunk at midnight you know that's like about it (laughs) you know ate a peanut butter jelly sandwich after the show well, maybe really something good. will pop up on the store. You never know. You never know, yeah. I mean, I almost like feel like we don't want 
weird things to happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? It's you, like you we want it best. to just run smooth, and you know, we obviously have a lot of laughs and and stuff in the process, but they're all just we just joke around with one another and, and have fun that way. But we we don't like a whole lot of adventures anymore. We like yeah. everything to run pretty pretty smooth like a well-oiled machine so that's the goal anyway yeah as more to uh <laughs> something can happen along the way you know yeah, we, yeah usually when things happen it's mostly most of the time it's either stressful or or just not good yeah. in general so <laughs> so right now like i said before you, you guys are playing the entire colors album um you guys actually released a dvd back in 2008 um do you think that maybe you'll for this track of like this tour right now do you think you'll release like another dvd are you guys playing it now Based on this tour, yeah. I, I don't think so. No, we really wanted this tour to just literally be, you know, a throwback to to that time, and and you know, we're really not trying to monetize it any other way than to to do the tour and and do some limited, you know, merch and stuff like that, and and that's really it. We're not really trying to dwell too much on it. We're just trying to, you know, it's, it's our way of sort of thanking the fans that have stuck with us all this time. Mm -hmm. And to, like I said, just sort of pay homage to to um, a real turning point in our careers. You know, Colors was a very important album for us. So that's really the goal. We don't. I don't think we have any other intentions. That, you know, once this tour is over with, we'll kind of move on to the next thing. You know, we got a new album that we record just recorded, and and that'll come out, and we'll tour in support of that, and 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 we'll move forward. It's kind of nice that you guys did this because, like, not every band does like you know uh, entirety tours, album tours, and stuff. Like some bands do, some bands don't. Like. Uh, I know, like Slipknot came out with their uh, album, and you know, and they just tore, they just put out like a bunch of B sides and live stuff to it. Like, do you guys think about that, or you're like, now nah, we want to do the live route? Um, yeah, we just just wanted to do the live route. You know, I mean, we're not a band that records a lot of extra songs or anything anyway, so it's, you know, we don't we don't really have any material recorded other than, you know, especially from that era. That's yeah. all we recorded. You don't have like a vault of just all tracks and stuff like no, that. No, we don't like, you know, no, none of that. Like everything we recorded ended up on the album. So, I mean, there's okay. no B sides or anything like that. And I love when bands just like release used to like Pantera. Remember like, I think it was Piss came out. Yeah. It's like, where did that just come from? Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of bands record, 20 songs and only 12 make the album and then they have eight extra songs that they can use for b-sides or they can release one like a year later we're just not one of those bands you know we we write generally write an album and basically everything is intended to be on the album so so uh going back to uh, uh coma ecliptic right now that came out two years ago and uh you guys right now are actually working on a new album. I think you guys finished recording it, and you guys are mixing it. Yeah, we're in the process of uh, mixing it right now. It's it's probably almost done. We're gonna get it mixed by uh, Jens Bagren in uh, Sweden. So um, I wonder if they can hear that out there. This <laughs> pretty loud sound check going on right now. So yeah, it's being mixed, and um, you know, hopefully that'll be done, and then it'll be mastered, and and we'll be. You know, and it'll be sort of the marketing phase, and, and then we'll hopefully get this thing released early next year. So early, like, 2018? Like yeah, 2018. Like January, something like that? Yeah, January, February time frame. Okay, cool. So is there any, um, do you have an album title yet for this or any ideas for it? We, don't, we, we do have some names kicking around. We haven't publicized it yet, but we kind of have to decide. We've got to narrow it narrowed down to a couple. Anything and, you want um, to hint at? Like, what's that? Anything you can hint at? Give us a little... Not really, mainly because I, I don't know what it's going to be, and it's just a word. Anyway, you know, it's not like something, you know, I guess when it's when the time comes, when we decide on what it's going to be called, it'll be it'll be announced. But, uh, you know, it's 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 just a, right now, we're just basically just deciding between two words um, that um, we feel like sort of captures the uh, lyrical content of the album and also is, is a catchy name. Um, so... Coma Ecliptic was pretty catchy. I thought so. Yeah, uh, we like we like names like that that are kind of like, oh, you know. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Well, and so. then uh, Parallax. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that was same a nice long one right there. Yeah, same kind of thing. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We got like I said, we got to narrow it down to a couple names. Any uh, what's like? Because you guys like do concepts and stuff like that. Any concept lyrical things you could talk about? Um, this one's like, you know, it, it is a concept album lyrically, but. It's probably a little looser of a concept. I mean, it's um, it, you know, it's a story and and whatnot, but it 
you know, I, I probably won't go into too much detail. That's probably more of a Tommy thing that I'm sure he'll have to talk about a lot, especially when the album comes out. But um, yeah, this one is a, it is, a, you know, lyrically it is, it does follow a story. It does have a concept. It does sort of have a, a message that we're trying to get across. Um, and it's one that I think jives pretty well with the music. But um, as far as the specifics of it, you know, I, I I didn't write the lyrics, and I, I feel like Tommy could probably articulate it uh, much better than I could. But it, it is another concept album of sorts, but maybe a little a little looser of a concept than in the past, you know. So like, and a little less sci-fi. Less sci-fi? A little less sci-fi. Oh, okay, because yeah. you guys kind of have that vibe, you know. Yeah, it's fun to use. Hours. Yeah. So, oh, like, we'll go more into your because the lyrics is Tommy's thing. Uh, is there anything you tried differently on guitar? Try to challenge yourself. Try differently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're we're always trying to um, <laughs> we're always trying to as a guitar player. I mean, you're always trying to evolve in in one way or another. I mean, um, we're always trying to you know try different tones, try different you know sounds, trying to create different sonic textures and layers than we have in the past it's not so much about technicality or, or playing wise anymore you know to be honest i mean I've, i'm probably as good as i'm ever going to be you know i'm not i'm not trying to like play faster or or do weird guitar tricks anymore i'm mostly focused on um you know more tonal kind of things like using getting the right sound for a particular part using using a certain guitar for this part and then maybe a different guitar for another part so really just trying to to dial in what 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 is the what's the right sound for for a particular part and i think that's how we've how we've evolved now it's more like just kind of trying to do what's best for the song trying to be more expressive with the with our playing not as not as technical not as like you know so that's probably the biggest thing is that we're trying to be more expressive with with the playing um whether that be by you know just playing with more you know trying to play with more feeling or just using using different sounds different kind of sounds you know what i mean so overall just making a really good album yeah 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 exactly so um what kind of gear did you use like guitar wise and stuff like that oh man we used a bunch of stuff i mean i guess mostly i use for me personally i used um my ibanez signature guitar from for most of the rhythm guitars were done with that um we ended up using for an amp we use is a you used a modded um 5150 an old one from probably early 2000s i guess and then um you know that was for most of the heavy stuff, and then for like, you know, Dusty used his PRS for for his rhythm parts. Um, for for clean stuff, we used a, quite a bit of a we used a Telecaster for a lot of the stuff. Um, we did some acoustic guitars with with an Ibanez acoustic, um, as well as a PRS acoustic. Uh, we used a, a Strat, a Strat copy, like a PRS Strat copy for for some parts. Um, uh, we used a Port City amp for a lot of the clean stuff. A Port City is a company in North Carolina that makes really good clean amps. And uh, we used that for a lot of the clean stuff. So we really spread it out. I mean, we used a lot of stuff. And it was very, very part specific. You know, if a certain part called for a certain sound, we tried to get that sound, you know. Yeah, well, it's like you said, you're trying to go for the tone and feel the record. Exactly. So you used whatever you could. Yeah. Yep. So uh, is there a single we should be ex- expecting soon? Anything coming out? That's, I, we haven't even picked what we'll release soon, uh, first. I don't know. We, we, we're we at the phase right now where we're like, we really like all the songs, so it's going to be tough to like pick one that we like the most. Um, and and it's also hard to d- decide. I don't know when the, you know, when the label is going to decide to pump out the first single. You know, I imagine it'll be... You know, maybe a month before the release or something like that is maybe what they'll do. I'm, I'm really not even sure, and I'm not even sure what song, but uh, we're definitely excited to get some stuff out there for sure for people to hear and just see how we've progressed. And, and there's probably a couple songs on the album that I think would be good, a good sort of encapsulation of, of what we're trying to do on the album as a whole. Yeah. So. Well, I know we're definitely waiting for it. Awesome, yeah. Ho- hopefully, all. yeah. Hopefully people will be stoked on it, yeah. Yeah. It's been two years, man. Too long. I uh, know, yeah. <laughs> um, at least it's not like Metallica when they go on like five, six years. Yeah. Well, actually, how long? Was it eight years or something? Like that? Like oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, some of those, yeah, it's crazy. They, they take a long time. They take a long time. I guess they can afford to take a break like that. Yeah, right? 
<laughs> All right, so during my uh, show, I have uh, a random silly question segment. I ask you three random questions. You ready to take part in that? I'll give it a shot. Here we go. I like that attitude. <laughs> Um, all right, so last time I talked to Blake, he said you guys are really into coffee. Oh, yeah. And all that. So how do you like your coffee, and what's your favorite type, like brand or whatever? Well, I own a coffee roasting company, actually, oh, yeah, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Um, I think you posted about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but So, yeah, I'm a total coffee head. I mean, I like um, – it depends what kind of mood I'm in. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I like cappuccinos and cortados small like espresso based Cortados? drinks That's yeah it's like a it's basically a smaller cappuccino it's like a four or five ounce uh, drink yeah it's two ounces of espresso usually and then the rest of it would be uh, steamed milk in my case some sort of non-dairy milk either soy or uh, i really like oat milk oh um, i never had that yeah it's good and uh but then I'll, uh, other than that like i just i like black i'll drink black coffee because i actually you know i enjoy the flavor of really well well roasted coffee I've been getting into like so, uh, like cold brew. Ice, cold brew, like black. Cold, cold brew is great. Yeah, I mean, if if it's a good coffee and you, you can cold brew it, it can be really good. Um, there's some perks to that as well because it's a well, significantly lower acidity, so it's easier on your stomach. Oh yeah, that's and true. And it's very refreshing on a on a hot summer's day. So definitely. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I mean, I love coffee in almost any form, but it, you know, if I had to pick, I would say like a a, a soy cappuccino. Or just a straight up like you know black uh, black coffee brewed with like an AeroPress or something like that. Do you ever go to like uh, Starbucks and Dunkin' or that? You uh, stay away from those. Nah, areas? those aren't. I mean, I'll go to Starbucks in a pinch. I never get coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I just I just don't care for for their coffee. Um, but Starbucks, like I'll get like a flat white or something from Starbucks. At, le- at the very least, it's like consistent. You know what you're getting every time. It's not like my favorite coffee or anything, but I will get it in a pinch. But I like to seek out like the local spots. You know, independently owned places that are that are doing you know doing really good coffee. We found a couple coffee. good ones in uh, Montreal. Yeah, there's, but we actually I saw mean, you guys at the. Um, it was like during Heavy Montreal two years ago. And oh, we, okay. you guys were playing on the side date. Yep. Yeah, we went to that. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, we, yeah, we. There's you know, almost every city. You know, there's always good coffee spots. I like the first thing we do. You know, Blake and and Dan and I. We always look on Yelp or something. We're just like, hey, this place has five stars or whatever. Let's go check it out. So that's just something fun to do on tour. Go check out the. See, that could be a fun story to share. Sp- <laughs> yeah. No, it's not really coffee that adventures. exciting or anything. You just walk and get out of the bus and walk a couple blocks to a coffee place, but. Yeah. Um, all right, so question number two. If you can make one of your albums into a movie, which album would you choose and who would star in it? Ah, uh, man. Probably, I mean, I guess the one that would have the most, like, the strongest, like, imagery maybe would be, like, um, maybe Coma Ecliptic. Um, who would I get to star in it? I don't know. Blake and I were talking about it earlier. We're on a huge Michael Keaton kick right now. I feel like he can do it all, so I would probably pick like Michael Keaton, like for, like Birdman kind of style. Yeah, but, but he's also like he's got that dry humor thing going too. Yeah, and, he's very good at that. Um, he recently did. I don't know if anybody saw the Founder he he did where he plays Ray Kroc, the um, founder of of McDonald's as we know it. Uh, so but yeah, I would probably pick like Michael Keaton. I think he would kill it. Yeah, last year when you guys were at PlayStation. Um, and I interviewed Blake. I asked him the same question, and I want to see if you would say the same thing. And you got you guys both said the same album, which is funny. Oh, and, really? Yeah. What he, actor did he pick? Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I like him in um, Nightcrawler. Yeah, I think that's he's it's a pretty a good movie. Yeah. Crazy act, like, yeah. character in that. Yeah, creepy, like but, very uh, dark. And Michael Keaton would be cool. Yeah, I just it? think it'd be fun to see how he'd be the guy in the coma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I hope this happens. But just seeing him in those different environments and. I think he could sort of, he he sort of could be a chameleon, you know, because he can he can play a lot of different, um, you know, sort of characters and stuff. So yeah, first of all. Um, all right. So number three, what is your worst memory about school? Oh man, I still have nightmares. About, I'm 38 years old. I still have nightmares about forgetting my locker combination. So uh, that might be. And, but the thing is, I don't know if that ever... I, I don't even think that ever happened when I was in school, but I have nightmares about it. But the worst thing that ever happened in school, man... I remember one time in world history class, my my teacher was also the baseball coach, and I, I was on the baseball team. And I um, 
and it was world history. It was super duper boring. I mean, everything was just note taking. He was just writing on the chalkboard, stuff like that. And I literally, I fell asleep while I was just sitting there and I fell out of the chair. Like I literally fell out of the chair and crashed onto the floor and it was this big scene and like everybody's laughing at me and, uh, and the coach, teacher slash coach was like, wow, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then of course at baseball practice after, after the, uh, after school, he like publicly shamed me even more and he like made me run laps for falling asleep in his history class. And that was not a good memory because it was like embarrassing for one thing and then also i had to like run laps which is never fun and so uh that was probably like my worst school memory it was just a mortifying experience well i think a lot of people have fallen asleep like i fell asleep and fell out of my chair too so you're not alone at least. okay i mean i fell asleep in class all the time but it was usually intentional and i would just like put my head down and be like oh, i'm just gonna go to sleep but this particular time I, I was sitting up i was like i'm trying to stay awake i'm trying to stay awake i fell asleep and then i'm gone you ever had Oh my god. <laughs> uh, were you ever nicknamed uh, Sleeping Beauty? Cause I, I was back in high school. Was I what? Ever uh, nicknamed Sleeping Beauty? No, never. Yeah, they called me that all the time. So nice. The time. No. So uh, that's the random silly question segment. Thank you for partaking in that. Awesome. You probably hear this right now. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard to YouTube this out. Mm -hmm. Alright, so. Uh, what do you guys have planned after this tour? Like, do you think you're going to go just keep working on the album, or do you think you're going to start another tour? Uh, we'll probably, after this tour, take a, take a break until, you know, the album comes out, and then we'll tour, we'll start the touring cycle for that. So, you know, we'll, we'll stay home in November, December, probably January, and then, and then get back out on the road in February. All right, cool. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me. No cool. Uh,